All right, we're back, and it's good vibes time. I'm Martin Foss, and joining us, as always, is our transformation coach, Miss Debbie Cox Denova. Debbie, welcome to the program. Thank you. Good to see you again. We got good topic today. Very good. I can't wait to hear this. Decoding eye movement. Now, I know a lot of people talk about eye movement. I think Joni's the one that sparked this. She, she said, did. you know, she wants to know about people's eye movements. Me, Joni, and Darla were having lunch one day and they were talking about, well, if you look to the left, what does that mean? If you look to the right, what does it mean? If you look and look down, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. Are you going to teach us something today? I'm going to teach you something today, right, yeah. yeah. So if at home you want to get a pen and paper just to keep notes of this. But to start with, I will say this, that it is not, it's impossible just by the eyes alone to determine whether someone is lying or not. Mm -hmm. There are some nuances. There's some science to it, but it's not hard and fast science. Mm -hmm. So the main thing, first of all, is to understand that when we're talking about deception, we're talking about clusters of behaviors. We've talked about this before, right? Mm -hmm. You're looking for clusters because everyone's different. And what they found is that, for example, in some of the things that we're going to talk about, the directional look, mm -hmm. if you're left-handed, it could actually be opposite. Or if you're thinking mm -hmm. about something that, for example, thinking about putting something on a shelf, your eyes will follow the movement that you're thinking about up on top of the shelf. So if you're reading someone and, and following that hard and fast, you mm -hmm. might misread it. So the very first step, and by the way, all this information comes from the science of people, Vanessa Van Edwards again. If you are looking to read someone and their visual, you know, and, and their eye movements, mm -hmm. the first thing is to establish a baseline about who you're talking to. So you want to observe them when they're not being questioned. How, what is their normal movement pattern? And we're looking at baseline, we're looking at three things. We're looking, first of all, at their blink rate. What is the normal blink rate? Because some people have a faster blink rate than other people, okay? Second thing we're looking at is eyebrow movements. Are they fixed? or do they tend to be very expressive with their eyebrows Okay, by nature? And the third one is eye direction. Do they have a favorite place to look? Do they, they favor the right, favor the left, right? So once you've established a person's baseline, now you can look for, for deviations from their baseline. And every time you see deviations, especially when they are paired with clusters of other behaviors, remembering that only 7% of our communication is the words we use. Mm -hmm. We're looking at body language all the time. We're very actually very good at it, much better than we think because we've been doing it all our lives, right? Now you're looking for clusters of behaviors just to give you a red flag so that you can look deeper. So we're not gonna make any sort of definite assumptions about people right. but here's one thing okay so you've got the baseline of the person that you're looking at you've seen their normal patterns now what we're gonna do in general in general this can be flipped mm -hmm. if someone is looking left they're thinking past and right future so you can think of it like when you're writing on a piece of paper you go left to right right left mm -hmm. is the past right is the future all right so if you ask somebody a question and they look left, they're probably trying to access, probably trying to access memories from the past. And if they look right, they're using their imagination. They're, they're generating something, mm -hmm. okay? If a person is asked a question and they look up, well, first of all, if they look down, think about this, they're, it's introspection, right? They're kind of scanning the body within. If you're looking down, you're checking within yourself to see if you have the answer. So you're looking down, and then if you're looking down and to the right, of course, we're mm -hmm. accessing imagination. And if we're looking down and left, we're accessing the past, where we're looking within. If we are asked a question and we look up, typically what we're doing is we're looking for inspiration, some sort of... Mm outside of ourselves, mm -hmm. right? So it, it makes sense, right? Out of body. Right, left yeah. to right, past mm -hmm. to present, right? In, looking down, you're looking within yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. Like accessing, do I have the answer within me? Looking up, you are accessing intuition, right? And if you look left to right when you're questioned, typically what you're doing is you're looking for support. You're accessing someone else through either your memories or your imagination. So the heart, mm -hmm. like again. Especially in a group meeting. Right. Somebody looks left, mm -hmm. they're garnering support. Yes, okay. exactly, yeah. okay? So that these are called rapid and voluntary eye movements or saccades, okay? And what they found is that in some instances, it may be that, for example, I break eye contact with you because you looking at me makes me feel nervous and so mm -hmm. I need to think of something. But what they found is that even when you're on your own, these rapid eye movements, these saccades go on, all right? And mm -hmm. so what we've seen is a basic patterns that make us feel like, okay, this person is being decept deceptive. All of a sudden, there's this, this higher blink rate, right? Mm -hmm. So now they're accessing, they're processing more information 
or there's a conflict within them that either they are about to tell you something they may think that you don't want to hear, mm -hmm. or they're about to tell you something that isn't is untrue. And so if you look to see which direction they're looking at, it might mm -hmm. give you clues. Again, looking for clusters, and we're not accusing anyone of right. lying if they're looking right or left. Doesn't everybody have a, like I'm on the news desk interviewing people. Mm -hmm. I interview you all the time, interview different people. Yeah. So when somebody is intently answering me, and I'm looking at them and I'm listening, mm -hmm. sometimes I got to break away to write something because I don't want to forget to do a follow-up because you just made a point. So I may put, ask about blink rate. Yes. But at the same time, when I'm looking down writing, I'm reloading my thought process. Yes, and that's part of your baseline. So right. anyone who probably knows you understands that that's what's going on there. Mm -hmm. It's not, it doesn't mean anything necessarily. In this specific context, it's important that you be able to ask follow-up questions and keep track of that, right? Mm -hmm. So we're always, always making sure that we understand what the person normally shows up like mm -hmm. before we start assessing what they're communicating to us. The other thing is that if there's someone's genuinely interested, the eyebrows will go up, right? Like mm -hmm. you're taking in more light. Oh, right? Where like are my if you're eyebrows interested, right now? Your eyebrows are not very <laughs> <laughs> But all throughout the world, yeah. yes, all throughout the world, right, 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 our right. eyebrows raise, except in Japan, actually. This is interesting. In Japan, there's less eyebrow raising because there's a con the connotation of sexuality is inappropriate and it considers. So you won't see as much eyebrow raising in Japan, culturally. So it's a mystery. Women are a mystery in Japan. Mm, yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and then they've been kind of trained to be, right? But yeah. in, naturally speaking, when we raise our eyebrows, it's interest, right? It's like, ooh. Yeah. Surprise, tell, well, me more. tell me more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you're, you're taking yeah. in more light, right? Mm -hmm. When I know somebody's really nervous, and they, they'll they tell me before the show, mm -hmm. oh, I'm really nervous. I've never been interviewed before. I've been watching you for years. and I'm nervous. Yeah. And they, they're visibly nervous. Yeah. I try not to stare them down. Mm -hmm. That's good. I will introduce them. I'll sort of look off to the camera. I'll do a few things. And then I'll get there. And I, the first question I'm asking them is going to be quick. Yeah. If you stare them down, they get more nervous. They absolutely do. And so, there's a way that yeah. you can actually mm -hmm. convey with your eyes that mm -hmm. they're in a safe environment, too. So one of the ways that we talked about before the break was raising the eyebrows. And so mm -hmm. really, like, n nodding and leaning in with, with a raised eyebrow mm -hmm. look like this. Like, and a, a, sometimes a wink, will, a wink will actually break the stare, but also convey a friendliness, like you're mm -hmm. in a safe environment, right? And a wink can also be flirting. It can be, you know, there are, there are different things that a wink will uh, portray. But usually it's a way of saying like, hey, we're, we're okay. We're that good. was a flirting wink. That uh, was a right flirting there. wink that they yeah. just showed. Right? So but I won't be in the news desk doing <laughs> this to people. Like, hey, Debbie, welcome to Good Bob. Exactly. <laughs> it's interesting because, it, you know, like I said before, we are actually much better at this. There's a, um, there's a study by Cam in, at Cambridge University by si uh, Dr. Simon Baron Cohen, and he took uh, men and women, and he took the st strips of just the eyes, and the people were making different facial expressions and asked men and women if they could determine what state the person was um, expressing, just mm -hmm. through the eyes. And on average, men got 19 out of 25, and women got 22 out of 25. But in both, on both sexes, uh, we're better at reading eyes than we are body language. And obviously, women are slightly better for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, so there are many, many different things and we pick up on these little subtleties, right? Some, so somehow we tend to know some, when a, a wink is just like a friendly wink or mm -hmm. a flirtatious wink right. because there are other body cues that go with it. When someone is squinting, if you're saying something, and they're interested, what they typically do is squint their eyes, right? And they will tilt their head at the same time. So squinting and tilting the head to the left means that they're accessing, they're bringing blood flow to the logistical side of it. So they're analyzing what mm -hmm. you're saying. Squinting and leaning right means that they're tipping and, and bringing blood flow to the creative center so of the brain. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Oh, mm. <laughs> it right? hurts on the right side. <laughs> right. right? So, uh, so paying attention to cues, because people will give you cues about whether or not they're interested. There's yeah. an eye roll. We've talked about this before. An eye roll is a signal of contempt. It's a superiority yeah. thing, right? Um, sometimes you'll have, like, a single eyebrow flash, like, like somebody who's really like inter that's interesting, mm -hmm. right? Like tell me more. And so if you're watching these cues, when someone's trying to tell you something, if you want a, just a, a, a tip for, at home, if someone is interested in telling you something and they want, they want you to be interested in what they're saying, mm -hmm. they'll typically lean in and there will be a, a, a like eyebrow raise like this, right? Mm -hmm. They'll break uh, 
eye contact as they're after they've made a point. They'll look back at you at the end to see if their point hit home. So if you want to show that your the, the point hit home, then what you want to do is go like raise the eyebrows, oh, and then nod your head three times. So you're taking it in, you're instead of knock three times, it's nod three times. Nod three times. Yeah. So so it's kind of like a oh, mm. okay. Like that, so it's kind of like keep going. I'm mm -hmm. interested. You've got my attention, and it will make you memorable to the person if that's the response that you give them because they're giving you cues that they want to make an impact mm -hmm. on you, and you're giving cues back. I am impacted. Please tell me more. Right. Right. And so if you're in a meeting, and there's always somebody that'll be, you know where you stand. That's it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because if someone's that's interested. That's a hint to people out there. Yes. Okay. If, they're, if someone's interested, their eyes are going to, to we've talked about the feet. Mm -hmm. For sure. If you really want to see if someone is interested, you, the toes don't lie. The further away you get from the brain, the less control you have over the body cues. Mm -hmm. So if toes are pointing away, that's a bad sign. It means can, you, you may want to change your approach or just pay attention. So if you're on a date and the toes are pointing away, there will be no second date. <laughs> Right? Possibly. <laughs> you might be able to salvage it if you actually recognize the cues and adjust your behavior accordingly, right? right. So we want to be watching for the cues that people are giving because in general, if someone is interested, they are going to be looking at you. They're mm -hmm. actually going to be taking in more light when they're thinking. They're going to be squinting a little mm -hmm. bit. They're going to be using expressive motions. And we are designed to pay attention not only to the eyes, but also to the eyebrows. In fact, they did a study where they, t they re removed the eyebrows from celebrity pictures and people were had a harder time recognizing the celebrities without mm -hmm. eyebrows than when they removed the eyes or the nose. So that's how much eyebrows play a part in our recognizing other people. But the funny thing is, I'm sure you probably recognize them all. What do my eyebrows do when I'm interviewing you? Because right. <laughs> I are, don't know what they're doing. You have expressive eyebrows. Okay. So whenever you, like just a while ago, I don't know what we're doing. Like they, right. they naturally rise. So, and that is actually something that expressive people usually use their eyebrows. But you want to watch the baseline because some people just don't. Mm -hmm. They just have kind of a, a deadpan look right. <laughs> in general. You don't want to take that personally, but that can be very, you using your eyebrows a lot is actually really good for making the people, your guest feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Because if you did the deadpan expression, that's very disconcerting to well, people. If I'm doing that expression, that means I'm on a very serious news story. Yes, yes. And some, I feel somebody's not being truthful with me. Yeah, So yeah. that's when you got to do that. And the keys come across. All right, what a great topic. All right, and we're going to have you back next week for another great topic. And uh, can I have an eyebrow movement before we go to the break? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Debbie. Good seeing you. you we'll too. be back with more. Don't go away.